So what if the real key to building the future of artificial intelligence wasn't just about having more data or faster computers? What if it's about going deeper, getting back to a fundamental understanding of mathematics? Let's dive into how mastering these first principles could actually empower Africa to lead the entire next technological age. You know, our whole story really kicks off with this simple but incredibly deep question from a graduate student, Fondi. She's noticed something weird, a ghost in the machine, you could say. She asks an AI the exact same question twice, but she gets two totally different answers. Now, this isn't just a random glitch. Oh, no. It's a clue, a major clue that starts to peel back the curtain on how these systems actually think. And the machine's response? Well, it's pretty mind-bending. It basically says, hey, my logic is perfectly consistent. It's just not consistent with your rules. It's telling us that it operates by a whole different set of mathematical laws than the perfect idealized stuff we all learned in school. So what on earth are these rules? Well, that first big clue has a name, floating point arithmetic. And no, it's not some kind of magic. It's actually the mathematical compromise that pretty much all modern computers have to make just to handle numbers with decimal points. It's a shortcut, really. And check this out. This slide breaks it down perfectly. On the left, you've got the ideal mathematical reality we all know, where the order you add things in doesn't matter. But on the right, that's computer reality. For a computer, the order absolutely matters. See what happens? When it adds a tiny number to a huge one first, that tiny number gets so small in comparison that it just gets rounded away into nothing. It vanishes. This tiny, tiny error, when it's repeated billions and billions of times inside an AI, well, that's the ghost in the machine. But here's the big takeaway. This isn't some flaw that we just have to accept and live with forever. Not at all. It's a massive opportunity, a disruption opportunity. By going back to first principles and inventing new number systems, we can build AI that is fundamentally more reliable, more accurate, and way more efficient. Okay, so let's move on to our second pillar, because it all builds from here. Think about training an AI. It's a lot like being on a chaotic hike. You're dropped into this vast, foggy, mountainous landscape of possible solutions, and your one and only goal is to find the absolute lowest point, the deepest valley, which represents the model with the smallest possible error. The thing is, this hike is absolutely treacherous. It's so easy to get trapped in a shallow valley thinking you're at the bottom or get fooled by these long, flat areas. Sometimes your steps are way too big and you overshoot everything. Other times they're so small you barely move at all. And let's be honest, a lot of the solutions we use today, they're basically just clever hacks to get around this terrain, not fundamental maps. And this is where it gets really important. This isn't just an academic puzzle. If we can develop better mathematical maps for this landscape, we can cut the time it takes to train an AI from weeks, maybe even months, down to just a few days. That is an absolute economic game changer. It completely levels the playing field, allowing startups anywhere to compete with the giants of Silicon Valley. All right, let's talk about a really critical distinction. Most of the AI we have today, they're brilliant mimics. They're like parrots. They can listen to enormous amounts of information and repeat the patterns they find with incredible accuracy. But what we really need are AIs that can think like scientists. Systems that don't just see patterns, but actually understand the cause and effect behind them. The math of causality gives us the exact language for this. You see, there is a world of difference between P of Y when X, which is just the probability of Y happening if you happen to see X, and P of Y if you actually intervene and do something to X. One is just passive observation. The other is active experimentation. That's the leap from parrot to scientist. And why does this matter so, so much? Because the continent's most urgent questions aren't about just recognizing patterns. They're about intervention. To solve huge real-world problems in healthcare, energy, and food security, you need an AI that can reason about the consequences of your actions. Now let's move on to our fourth big idea, and it's a beautiful one. At its core, learning is a form of compression. Just think about it. The best, most elegant explanation for anything is almost always the one that can be stated in the shortest, most concise way. This concept is actually formalized in what's called the minimum description length principle. The idea is really simple. An AI's goal shouldn't just be to be accurate, but to be elegant. It needs to find the true essence of the data, to pack light, and throw away all the redundant, heavy baggage. This quote just makes the whole concept so incredibly powerful. 
Imagine it, when you can compress a really sophisticated AI model down to a tiny, tiny size, it means it can run on a cheap phone completely offline anywhere in the world. This isn't just some cool technical achievement. This is about delivering dignity. It's about giving everyone access to powerful information and tools. So, after all this, where does it all lead? It leads to a powerful new equation, a new way of thinking, and it's this. Mathematical mastery is the absolute foundation of technological sovereignty and independence. Now, this is where the thinking gets flipped completely on its head. What if challenges like intermittent power or spotty internet or scarce data, what if they aren't just obstacles to overcome? What if they are the perfect catalysts for true innovation? They force you to build AI that is robust, incredibly efficient, and resilient. In other words, AI that works in the messy real world, not just in some pristine lab. And this kind of thinking gives us a clear strategic roadmap. It's a blueprint for building a totally unique AI ecosystem based on eight pillars of deep mathematical work. Everything from the robust computation we talked about to using the actual shape and geometry of data for better understanding and even preparing our foundations for the quantum future. It's a complete vision. But there is one final and maybe most crucial piece to this puzzle. Because this isn't just about building better technology. It's about building technology in a better way. It's about infusing everything we create with a guiding philosophy. And that philosophy is Ubuntu. The profound, beautiful belief that we are all connected. That I am because we are. My humanity is fundamentally tied up in yours. And this isn't just a social concept. It can be a powerful design principle for technology itself. So what does an AI built on the principle of Ubuntu actually look like? Well, it prioritizes the collective good over individual profit. It's built from the ground up to be transparent and explainable. It's inclusive of all people, all languages, all income levels. It seeks to empower people, not replace them. And it's sustainable. And get this, these aren't just feel-good ethical afterthoughts. They are a genuine competitive advantage. Zippo, the engineer, just nails it with this quote. The goal is to build AI for the world as it actually is, not as we wish it would be. Because an AI that can thrive under tough constraints is an AI that can thrive absolutely anywhere. That's the AI the whole world really needs. And so we have to end with Professor Kamalo's words. This journey back to first principles, back to the deep truths of mathematics, it isn't about finishing some race. It's about starting a completely new one. One where everyone, everywhere, has the tools to build a more intelligent, a more equitable, and a more dignified future for us all.